I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction, here with your feeder flash for Monday, July the 26th, brought to you in part by Joplin Regional Stockyards. Regular Monday sale here, uh, about 4,000 head expected. Uh, ought to be a pretty good sale. I would think the market would be higher again. Uh, next uh, special they got coming is uh, August the 4th. Uh, next Wednesday, got a special cow and bull sale late in the afternoon, starting at 4.30 in the afternoon, so don't miss that at Joplin Regional Stockyards. We've got bullish fundamentals all over the board, and I tell you what, if, if cattle, uh, of course, who knows about the board, but if cattle aren't sharply higher this week, again, I know you guys are selling these yearlings crazy high, but I think they should be higher again as all of our fundamentals have uh, really gotten a shot in the arm here in just uh, the tail end of last week. But, uh, you know, what all do we have? We, we've got to talk about uh, getting rid of the ethanol uh, mandate uh, to, for the blenders in your uh, refineries there. Uh, that, that, if that goes forth, that, that will back uh, corn off quite a bit. So that could be good for your inputs, your feed costs there. Uh, we've got an executive order that is expected to come, and they pretty much told us it's going to happen, on the truth and labeling uh, on product of the USA on your beef labels. That is a huge shot in the arm. Good job, RCAF, for continuing to push on that, but that's going to come. Uh, now things that happened late last week, your cold storage report, uh, the three proteins put together, uh, the stock piles on those stocks and it sometimes throws people but your stock piles of those products in cold storage are the smallest that they've been since the fall of 2014 that's bullish cattle on feed report come out on Friday it was kind of bullish or friendly we could say I don't know if you want to call it full bullish but it was sure friendly on feed inventories uh, July the 1st come out at 98.8 well the expectation was 99 percent so it's on the friendly side your June placements were, were fairly bullish though at 92.9 percent of a year ago uh, when your expectations were 94 and I told you guys late last week that the, the, the numbers on the expectations looked pretty rosy and we still beat them so you should take that into account and I think it should be uh, you know, considered to be a, a little more bullish, uh, even though it's not that far from the numbers, but the numbers were very, very friendly uh, on the expectations. Uh, look at your marketings come out to be 102.7% of a year ago, and they, they already had them pegged at 102.3. So pretty good. Uh, the, the fewest numbers of cattle that we see on feed uh, compared to normal or in Iowa. Uh, you know, I hate to see a lot of those uh, small farmer feeder guys uh, exiting the business, but uh, where our big corporate yards at, uh, we in, in our bigger commercial yards, we continue to see them expanding and we continue to see fewer people doing it. So we're losing it, uh, our cattle feeding in places that uh, have the smallest produce producers and that's in Iowa there. But uh, what else is bullish? How about your mid-year inventory report? That is major bullish. So uh, with cattle and calves totals uh, down 1%. They were only expected to be down a half a percent. That's good. Uh, beef cows down 2%. Uh, they were only expected to be down a little over 1%. Uh, and beef uh, hef replacement heifers down 2% also. And they were only expected to be down 1%. So all of this stuff is very, very bullish. I continue to say we need to strike while the iron is hot. Uh, we've got the ear of Washington. We can get about anything that we want done. Uh, I was talking to the guys there uh, at U.S. Cattlemen's Association. I'm like, why don't we get some of this legislation pushed through, you know, while we've got everything going right now? And and, uh, and indeed, they are looking at that. And I said, well, what about your minimum requirements on negotiated trade? And they said, we are looking at getting that done. And the only thing we're waiting on is, is really us telling them what we want it to be. And I don't know that anybody's ever going to agree on it. Of course, I wanted 30% uh, 
uh, way back when, and that got blowed off uh, uh, because the guys up north want 50. Uh, the guys down south, for the most part, don't want anything because most of them are already in a sweetheart deal. Uh, but your cow-calf people and your backgrounders, they've got to have something because they've got to have real money. They've got to have checks to pay for new pickups and and, and rent and things like that. And so we've got to, to keep an active market on, on the top end uh, of your fat cattle trade there so that it continues to hold uh, our yearling markets and our calf markets because we're enjoying those uh, pretty decent right now, but we can't let the iron get cold. We've got to do something. So, you know, I think maybe we should just go with the, uh, the robust recommendations of Dr. Kuntz there whenever he put those out. You know, that study was done with your checkoff dollars. We might as well go ahead and, and use those numbers. They're not great. They're not nearly as heavy as what, uh, you know, Chuck Grassley and them up in Iowa would like to have. Uh, but, uh, you know, the heck of it is we got to do something. We got to get something while we can get it. And instead of being bullheaded and not agreeing on what we should get, and I don't know how anybody could, you know, if it was up to me, I'd say we'd start in, in Iowa at 50% and then just work our way down in the five area feeding region, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. And, uh, you know, and, and 10, you know, in a place like Colorado or Texas would, would, would be huge if we could just get that. But uh, your Packers have kind of tipped their hand of late. It's the first sign that they've really noticed that things are, are, are starting to happen. The first thing that they've done, they're starting to, to try to turn in more negotiated grid cattle. And, uh, you know, talking to people that, are, uh, that are, are getting negotiated grid and they're wanting to turn in more of those numbers. But we don't get to see any of the negotiations. You know, we don't have the reported uh, uh, trade out there. We don't have the, uh, uh, the rumor mill like we do in the cash market of what's going on. So it doesn't really help us uh, find price discovery in that. But, uh, you know, I, I negotiated grids the second best way to sell cattle right after negotiated cash. But uh, we got to get some kind of a minimum requirement done. Uh, before we before we lose, uh, you know, we, we've got a lot of inertia here. We've got a lot of, uh, of noise out there, and we're we're the squeaky wheel, and we're getting greased. We need to go ahead and get something that's going to take care of us for the long term. Let's talk about your board from last week. August live cattle futures. Monday was up just seven cents. Tuesday down forty seven. Wednesday up twenty seven cents. Thursday up seventy five, and Friday up seventy odd week with never a, a daily movement of a dollar or more either direction but your August live cattle futures ended the week at 121.50 that was up just 33 cents for the week but it was positive go out to October ended the week at 127.15 that was actually up a dollar 55 and uh, you look off out there for spring April uh, all important April sitting at 138.70 I always say your April contract on live cattle is the most important and your August is the most important on feeder cattle and your August feeder cattle for Monday were up 175. Tuesday was down, took it all back and a little more down 185. But then from Wednesday on, just bang, bang, bang. Wednesday was up a dollar and a quarter. Thursday was up 142. Friday was up 187. Uh, and your August feeder cattle contract ended the week at 160.07 up 445 for the week i think these cattle could get even scarier high guys and i'm going to give you some quotes towards the end of this uh this visit here that uh, that sound awful high but they, they could get stronger yet and i think uh your market's going to be awful good for your fall delivery calves too september contract on feeder cattle 162.52 it was up 402 uh, new crop December corn down nine cents on the week at 5:43 to end the week last week. Fat cattle trade through Thursday, light light uh, trade on negotiated cash, 63,400 head through Thursday, and they didn't sell enough on Friday to water shotgun. How about your live sales steers and heifers? Sold from 117 to 125, which that price spread would be steady to a buck lower. But actually, your weighted average was a lot lower than that. They took it back, guys. Uh, north was trading from 120 to 123 for the most part. Uh, your south was unable to hold 120. 
uh, bulk and they started selling them 118 and 119 uh, there late in the week and, and we did see uh, on your Thursday sales in the Northern Plains especially they started to get a little bit of it back but still your weighted average on live steers in your five area feeding region was 120.65 and that was down $2.15 from the uh, the same report uh, through Thursday of the previous week won't be a whole lot different uh, on on your uh, roundup on for our next visit to uh, we'll get the whole uh, the whole weekly action there. But dress sales steers and heifers one to two dollars lower on the spread from one ninety four to two dollars. But actually uh, the bulk were not that much lower and, and there was there's more demand in the northern plains as there has been here for the last several months. But dress steer weighted average at 196.79. That was off uh, just under a dollar from the same time a, a week ago. How about your Friday sales? Not much to talk about. About 300 head in Iowa is all that was confirmed on Friday in your five area. 20,900 head for the week, all at 124 late in the week, and that was towards the top of your price range, so that's not too bad. And I think your fat cattle will sure be higher this week. It'd about have to be. Uh, Nebraska had no confirmed sales on Friday, 23,700 head for the week. Kansas had no sales on Friday, just 12,900 head for the week. And Texas, no sales on Friday, only 6,200 head for the week. Uh, but your, your TCFA and guys like that are going to say, oh, but we had some negotiated grids or some, uh, some grid cattle that they turn in as negotiated grids. And then now they're wanting to throw those on top of there and make it look like there's more cash trade, but there's hardly any guys. I mean, we've completely lost it and everybody's going to be a, a chicken or a turkey grower here before long. Box beef cutout values did find support. They were, they were falling big time here for the last several weeks uh, from those overinflated prices uh, that the Packers were charging their customers for the product. Uh, they've been falling a long time, but now we finally found a bottom, and they were lower on the week, but uh, bounced there towards the end of the week. But box beef cutout values, your weighted average on all of last week's sales, 265.88. That was down $5.93 uh, than the weighted average from the previous week. But actually, to end the week, uh, the, the Friday afternoon quote was a little higher than that at 266.63. Uh, your selects, your weighted average on all of last week's sales, 249.31. That was down $5.40 from the weighted average from the previous week. And there again, your, your late uh, week sales there Friday afternoon was a touch higher than that, about 50 cents uh, on uh, 100 weight there higher, but uh, not a big deal. Your slaughter actually turned out to be better. You know what? They were scaring us all week, and that may be one reason they were able to buy some cattle cheaper last week, is because they kept scaring us, talking about how uh, you know we were going to be dark in spots. And by the time we finished up the week, 652,000 with an impressive Saturday kill of 71,000 expected. Uh, that 652,000 was just 1,000 less than the previous week, and 12,000 more than the same week a year ago. Uh, what else is going on this week, guys? Don't forget at Philip Livestock, Philip the Giant in South Dakota, they've got their anniversary barbecue special. It's going to be uh, tomorrow on Tuesday, the 27th. Uh, they've got a good run of yearling feeders coming in there, all off grass there, and that's dry grass country right there. And those cattle will be in really, really good condition to feed. 4,000 head plus they're going to have. Uh, nine o'clock mountain time is the starting time there and they've got a lot of really nice consignment so be sure to uh, get an order in there or be bidding on Philip uh, the Giant there on Tuesday here tomorrow. What else is going on in your feeder cattle markets? Let's talk about a, a board sale that they had at the Union Stockyards in Stanton, Virginia there and uh, I've been trying to get some quotes on there but it's hard to get that information as quick as I'd like it but uh, Brandon Neely, uh, my, my buddy up there and world champion auctioneer, uh, he, he works there, works with those guys, sells there, does a good job. And he shared some information with me out of Union Stockyards in Stanton. The mountaintop cattle from Warm Springs, Virginia had a load of these black baldy steers, 
to weigh 875 at delivery, uh, late August delivery, and that helped them quite a bit than the cattle that was on current delivery, several dollars higher on those. And this is way out in Virginia, guys. All natural home raised black baldy steers to weigh 875 in late August at $155. And those cattle were represented by Brandon Neely also. Talk about your real time index on DV auction. Ended the week at 152.03. That was up 99 cents, almost a square buck there from where it ended last week. And so uh, we did see some gains in your sales. Not so much early in the week. Uh, they kind of that tailed off early in the week, uh, especially on feeder steers. And we talked about how your your country bids uh, in the Flint Hills and the Osage had had petered off just a little bit, two or three dollars here and there. Uh, so that's kind of the way your sales were too up through Wednesday but then when we got all those shots in the arm on the board and everything and everything started looking rosier your late week sales like Pratt were just sharply higher so we and we should be coming into sharply higher sales here on this Monday and into your high volume sales to start the week but uh, feeder steers like I said down early but then sharply higher late ended up with your real-time index based on an 800 pound steer a buck higher than the end of last week feeder heifer sold good all week from steady to two bucks higher how about some individual quotes around the circuit edina livestock in edina missouri had a heck of a sale there on friday 62 head 870 pound steers in edina missouri at 154.50 how about the Turlock Livestock Auction Yard out there in California? I tell you what, it's dry out there, but people still want fancy calves. 116 head, 514 pound steer calves in Turlock, bring 180.50. St. Orange Livestock, my buddy Justin Tupper, I wish he was going to the house hearing this week on Wednesday because he did such a wonderful job with the Senate, but I tell you what, he's got to make a living somehow. And uh, he's out there running that sale at St. Ange Livestock and then the Newell Sheep Yards also. But St. Ange Livestock on Friday sold 56 head, 681 pound steers at 175 and a quarter. Wow. But the best quote that I saw anywhere late last week in your Zach Tran top quote for the day come out of Lexington Livestock Market in Lexington, Nebraska. 239 steers, big swath. Weigh 954 at 154.50. And that's your feeder flash for Monday.